was it being a single white mom to black children? Hey, hey baddies. baddies! It's your girl Natalie Odell and welcome back to your favorite beauty channel on YouTube where we talk everything beauty, fashion, lifestyle, and most importantly, self-love. I'm here with Mama Rhonda Odell. My mom. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and today we're just gonna do some really fun stuff and talk about some really cool stuff that you guys were asking. Um, you guys have a lot of curiosity about her style of parenting, what it was like to raise um, biracial children and stuff like that. So we're gonna be doing some fun things and answering some of those questions for you guys. So it's gonna be a really good vibe, all right? Good yeah. energy only. Gonna right? be epic. <laughs> so make sure you guys turn those post notifications on, subscribe and also- Share the video. Share the video and subscribe to my mom's channel. Mama Rhonda's World. Yeah, and you're gonna get more consistent with posting. Yeah, I've been ghost for a while, but I'm gonna do better, I promise. <laughs> My jam rockers. Exactly, a lot of you guys have been asking like, where's Mama Rhonda's uploads? And I'm like, I'm like, mom, come on, you gotta film. I know. So, all right guys, let's get into the video. Okay. It's crazy, but let's go. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I don't care if it snows. I guess I'm out of my mind. And take me back to Manhattan. Back to the city where the magic happens. You wear your suit and tie, and I will wear my satin. Where all the lights are bright, and we won't even make it. Okay, mom, what are we doing? We have to go. We gotta save these babies. <laughs> <laughs> They needed Mama Rhonda to come all the way from Florida to give them a little perk up. Exactly. So, yeah, we're gonna, we're, the pot is a good enough size, but it, there's like no dirt in there. So we're gonna repot this baby back into the original pot with some really good potting soil. That one over there, that needs some attention too. So we got a nice big pot for that one. Yeah, so guys, I don't know, really know what exactly happened. You know, I'm doing my best as a plant mom, okay? My mom is huge into, you know, nature and potting and planting, and she has like over a hundred fruit trees. So she knows everything about this. So as soon as she came out here, I was like, okay, mom, I need your help, you know? I at least kept it alive for like a year. So I'm very proud of that, but it's starting to look a little, needs a little mother's love. So let's get busy. <laughs> and save these babies. Okay, baddies, so we are outside now in my little courtyard. We have the plants that we're gonna be repotting. I'm really excited, because look at my baby, looking real, just struggling. <laughs> okay, so tell them what we're gonna do first, and then we're gonna get into your questions. So first off, what's the baby's name? This is Big Bertha. So Big, Big Bertha <laughs> is a little wilty, but we're gonna take her from this pot into this pot and normally what you wouldn't want to do is put some rocks and stuff at the bottom because this doesn't have drainage you don't have any so we're just going to improvise and not do it but when you water her you're not going to want to over water her because you don't want the roots in water okay so you'll just have to remember there's no drainage at the bottom so whatever we water once a week just a, just a little yeah so what we're going to do first is have you cut the bag open and now you're going to fill about maybe this much dirt in the bottom, maybe to that line, like around here. All right. Okay, Batty, so your first question that we're gonna answer is, what was Natalie's favorite toy to play with growing up? Oh, I know that one right off the bat. <laughs> I bought Natalie this little Cabbage Patch doll when she was little. And it was like her skin color, which was really hard to find because you could find white ones, you could find black ones, but you didn't really find caramely colored ones. Yeah. And she had a little bathing suit on and snorkel fin and all the whole thing. So she was a little beach cabbage patch doll. Yep. And that was her favorite toy. It really was. I remember it, guys. Like it was yesterday. I remember because at that time we lived in Jamaica. So. Uh, we lived on the beach and I just remember feeling like, you know, we would be swimming together and it was just amazing that she had little goggles on. I, she was my best friend and somebody stole her 
and I was heartbroken. Like the, another little girl stole her, and I still have not forgiven that girl so, to this day. To this didn't day. she come and tell you? No, like I years think later that, or something. I think her one of her parents told me years later. Or was so it that the they parent that stole it? No, the parents didn't steal it, but she, I forget. I think that the conversation came up about the Cabbage Patch doll and how it went missing. And then the parent was like, dang, I don't know what happened to it, but I remember my kid had it. All right, so now we're just removing. Okay, since it doesn't want to come out. We oh, it want, is starting to come out. Yeah, but you don't want to break the roots. So okay. lay it on the side and then you're going to roll it. Okay. We'll get the broom later and clean it up. So push, push, push. Yeah, while you're rolling. This no. is to, I guess, get her out of her pot. Yeah, without of, causing too much stress. Her comfort zone. There we go. So now you want to take her roots and just loosen them up a little bit. So she's not pot, what they call pot bound. Okay, Babby, so we have Bertha in her new pot. Um, well, she was already like sitting in this pot, but she actually wasn't planted in it. No, she um, was planted in this little tiny thing. So it gave the illusion that she was in this big pot. And that's why she's root bound, because she needs to spread out. You can see that we put a several inches of dirt underneath her so her roots can spread out. But she has about this much the whole way around that uh, we have to fill in now with the potting mix. Okay, mom, so the next question is, how would you react if Natalie, if I told you I was pregnant right now? Are you kidding me? <laughs> My first question would be, does easy know? <laughs> then we could take it from there. If you say, yeah, easy knows, okay, we're all good. So tell me the details. Well, how did you guys plan this? What happened? Who's the dad? Well, would you get excited? Of course I'd be excited. But if you said, mom, easy don't know, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> and it's like, what did you do? <laughs> Uppercut straight to the yeah. chin. Okay, so the next question is, what was one thing that Natalie struggled with as far as discipline? You mean like today? today? <laughs> Growing up. Like, like what we had upstairs going on? No, I'm just joking. As a kid, Nat has not changed. She's still like wants to take charge. She's bossy. So she didn't want to be told what to do. And if, if, I, if I did tell her something that she disagreed with, it was, but mom, listen to this. And then she'd want to give me the whole list of why she shouldn't do it or why she should do what she wants. Like she'd have it until she'd wear me. Yeah. And sometimes she'd just wear me down. I'd be like, but honestly though, Nat, if you made a lot of sense, I would concede and give you the, you okay. know. Okay. So we have filled it up almost all the way, but now my mom is saying that we need to get some dirt down into the middle of the pot so guys pay attention because if you have any plants at home that are struggling maybe this can help you to repot okay yeah. if i can't be there in your in your courtyard with you or your living room at least you can watch the video and learn how to do it exactly okay you ready for the next question yeah so the next question is are you happy with the way that easy treats your daughter oh my god imagine if i said no <laughs> i would get what hundred thousand comments of what do you mean mama Rhonda? no honestly i would say yes she treats you really good you know and vice versa you treat her really good okay she definitely adores you and vice versa okay so i guess that's it we got it in the pot safe and sound and now we're going to replant the next plant so that one starts thriving as well right and since we have to carry this all the way back up to your apartment we're not going to water it down here and there's no facility to water it but you don't want to transplant and not water. So when you're doing it yourself, water it as soon as possible. This won't take us too long and we'll get them upstairs and get them a nice big drink of water. And next time I come to visit, Bertha should be all happy and blooming again. Yeah, because she honestly hasn't bloomed in like a year. We're gonna do this little guy next. Okay. We're actually gonna use the same pot again, but we're gonna split it. There's too many plants in here now for that little spot and we don't have another pot. So we're gonna put a little bit of this in this old candle holder that you had. 
so I'm just going to separate and now that's not very big so we're just going to use one but you can see these are all separate little plants they're little babies so you could have several pots if, I wanted. if you wanted to I saved these pistachio shells so what we're going to do is put some in there leave some in the bottom and that'll help with drainage so put a handful of dirt in there Okay. Leave the shells in the bottom. So is that for so the water so goes, it doesn't mold? Yeah, and so that the roots aren't sitting in a lot of water. Is that good? So, yeah, that's good. You know, it's not going to stay in here forever, but it'll look cute for now. Aw, yay! Okay, somebody wants to know what's our favorite thing about each other. Aw. I think my favorite thing about my mom is how loving she is. You know, she's just a very emotional and just loving person and you know i feel like sometimes i'm just so used to her being that way that i feel like sometimes i could take it for granted but when i see you know even other people's relationships with their mom and stuff and maybe their mom's not as affectionate or as sweet and stuff i realize how much i really do value that in my mom oh thank you <laughs> You know, right, what, I, what I feel about you is how caring and compassionate you are. You have a, you have a tough side, so you don't always show, like, you're not as, like, uh, soft, soft as I am when it comes to sentiment and stuff. But I'll tell you what, you're there. Like, wh whoever you care about, you got their back. Like, you, there's no, never a thought is, oh, is Nat going to support me or is Nat going to be there for me? she's there believe Aww. me she's we've since she was a little girl we've called her the defender of the family even more than josh which you know josh would just be chill somebody's picking on josh or you know he's just like he's getting teased about his dreadlocks or whatever it is he don't care he don't care no you need more dirt in there he don't care what people think nat would be like what would you say about my brother so yeah she's always there to defend and, and have each other's backs so that's awesome. This question kind of just goes with the last one. How often does um, Natalie call you? <laughs> ah, yeah, that's it. You know what? I'm whoever asked that question, thank you. Because not only does this give me the, the chance to boast about Nat, but I can also throw a couple shots at Josh and Cena. <laughs> so Nat tries her best to call me every day. And, Josh and I do pretty much call every day. Yeah. Sometimes I might, I might skip a day, but most of the times when we talk, it's because I called her. Right, Mom? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I think that was a shot against me too, right there. <laughs> I, think, I think she took that opportunity <laughs> to throw that in. Okay, so this question is probably one of my favorites. Somebody wants to know what qualities um, does my mom have that I would like to raise my kneesy babies with? <laughs> oh, kneesy babies, that's cute. Um, so I would probably say, you know, what my favorite quality about her is, is just how loving she is. I think that's one of the most important qualities that a parent can have is just really love their child unconditionally with, you know, discipline, discipline at the same time because you don't want your kid to just be spoiled because how much you love them. That was one of the questions that another person had was what type of mom was she? Was she like disciplinary? Like how was she? And I would say my mom was very disciplined. Like as a mother, she was very loving, but then it was balanced with like being strict and she just did not play a lot of things. We had to get good grades. There was no talking back. There was no disrespecting other adults. Um, having respect for people around us, but also for ourselves and our bodies and what we decide to eat. And um, even when it comes to dating, you know, treating ourselves with the utmost respect and making everyone around us treat us that way too. So I think those are like very important things that I would want to, you know, apply when I'm a mother, so. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Did you name this plant? No. You okay. want to name it? Somebody give us a good name right in the comments where you think this baby should be named. So we're going to take this one out. We're going to do the exact same thing. Fill the bottom with some dirt. Pull this out of the pot and then fill it in. 
Perfect. And I think we have time for like one or two more questions, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. That's it. Okay, so somebody wants to know who was the baddest kid growing up? Oh my god. Mostly you guys were all good kids. But okay, that's good to know. But you know, everybody has their quirks and their, you know, kind of I would say faults to a degree. You were definitely the most opinionated. You know, you had a, you had an opinion for everything. Still for, am. And still am, yeah. Okay, remember roll this on the ground. Okay. And then Josh he was Mr. Let's see how I can get out of it. You know, I always call him Tom Sawyer because he'll figure out how to get somebody else to do his work, why he can't, he'll tell you a million reasons why he can't do what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So that was Josh. And then with Cena, <laughs> yeah, you had to keep your eye on Cena. She was my little quiet rebel, you know? She'd be the one that was like real, She's always a good kid, but you know, she'd come home with a tattoo. Or <laughs> a tattoo, like a real one? Well, yeah, I remember. Oh, oh I, yes. yeah. I do know when she got her tattoo. She did tell me. But I'm just saying, she's the one that wanted to do stuff that was different than the rest of us, you know? Yeah. Okay, so this is the last question as we finish up this Finale. beautiful plant that you guys are going to name. So give me some good names below. But somebody would like to know, how was it being a single white mom to black children? I'm white? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, seriously. I, for how many decades now, I've felt more Jamaican than anything because I've adopted their culture and I love them so much. But, you know, you know, we spent a lot of time in Jamaica and a lot of time in America and I know there's issues and I'm not, I'm not downplaying anything like that because I know there are, but we have been so fortunate that I just feel like, I don't know if it's because we embrace everyone mm -hmm. that, or we just turn away from people or. I feel like we've definitely attracted the right type of people in our lives, in our lives. but I do know, um, you know, although we have been very fortunate as far as like not living in an area uh, that is really prejudiced or anything like that and my mom has like you know made sure of that that we always even went to schools that were very inclusive and stuff like that we have I mean experienced like different things and I would say yeah. uh, you've told us about stuff even when you met our dad um, which we're not gonna spend much time on him but we will say like, how was that though? Cause I'm sure they would want to know because in the time that you were <laughs> dating dad, it wasn't as socially accepted to date, date, you know, a black man as a white woman. So how was that? Was that like strange? Yeah, I, I mean, for the most part it was because I grew up in, in neighborhoods that were black and white, but they didn't really, intermix like mm -hmm. even in school my best friends was a white guy and a black guy mm -hmm. that we sat because we always had to sit in alphabetical order so the white kid was in front of me and the black kid was behind me and I was always turning back and forth and we had fun but I never thought about dating Aww. the black kid okay baddies the camera overheated so we're just gonna pick up from where we were you know you had a black best friend white best friend but it never really dawned on you to date the black best friend, even though you guys were closer. Exactly, because it just was never done. And it wasn't about rebelling or not rebelling. It just wasn't anything we ever thought of. Like it's, you know, it just, that's how it was. But once I got with your dad, like he was, you had asked me for the camera cut off. Mm -hmm. um, how was it once I got with your dad? And yeah. I said that I wasn't the one to really be aware of people watching us and stuff like that like we'd go to the mall and he'd say i don't want to go to the mall because people are always staring yeah he had a very nice looking dad he had long dreadlocks down to his butt and they were always perfect like how josh's are and you know he always looked neat and you know i had my white blonde hair and i said how do you know people aren't looking at us thinking like wow what an attractive unusual couple and you know what the crazy thing is they probably and not to say they probably were doing a little bit of both. It probably was like, 
uh, that first thought might have been a little judgmental, but then you also can't help but realize like, dang, well, maybe this is, I don't know. I feel a little weird about this because it's so new, but exactly. look at them, you know? I do remember you saying something about too, um, you know, that one of your customers, because my mom used to own a nail salon, said something a little bit racist about Josh when he was born. Um, which was she she owned a nail salon in a very upper scale area and it was the first nail salon in the city of Pittsburgh. Yeah, and, and what did the person like say or Yeah, there was a real estate company on the other side of our salon and I could hear it in the stock room. I was back there having lunch and I heard these elderly, you know, uppity white women that were that were realtors saying, Oh, it's a cute little thing, but who would ever want it? <gasps> What? And I sat there and I tried to contain myself. And I went next door. <laughs> you better go ahead, mom. You better go next door because I, I would have went next door. Well, I had to, I had to control myself first. Yeah. Because I would have went next door. Insane. Like that. Yeah. But I, I, you know, sometimes the best way to get someone to understand is not that way. Yeah. It's so to... I went in, and I still had tears running down my face, and I said. You know, the walls are very thin, ladies. And I could hear you through the wall while I was having my lunch break. And that little boy that you're referring to as it is my world. And I would live and die for that baby. Mm. And they both, they all three had like shocked looks on their faces. They wrote me a, an apology. When I came back to sit down at my station, my customer was there and she could see my tears and she went over to <laughs> and said her and she was put her two those, cents in too. Right. She was one of those upper class, you know, white women that could have very easily Felt been the, the opposite. Same way. Yeah. But she said no, no way. And after her nail appointment was finished, she went over and gave them read them the riot act also. They wrote me an apology. They sent flowers and everything else to try and I say you know what if it hits home and you realize what you know if they realize what they said and what that would mean to them like if that was their grandson that they were talking about or son you know then it was worth it was worth it okay so basically you know from what you're breaking down and also from my experience too there has been many ups and downs and you have encountered like very just racist moments while having you know biracial children and even some of it was with your family but we wouldn't even get into that right now but I'm sure that really hurt as well uh, what advice would you give to anyone who kind of goes through similar struggle struggles in general well you know even with the relatives that we had that you know that we're, we're not used to that never heard of it didn't accept it you know, I would say to what? two mixed mixed relations and yeah. two biracial kids and all of that, you know. Um, I would just say live your life, but live through love and mm -hmm. have patience. You know, they don't have to be part of your life. But if you live your life through love, you'd be surprised the end result. Okay, baddies, this was so much fun. Um, I'm so happy because my babies are all <laughs> replanted. We're going to give them some water and yeah, get them into get the, them out pool. Of the sun here. Yeah, but um, thank you guys so much for tuning in with us. Make sure you guys are subscribed and head over to Mama Rhonda Odell's channel. Mama Rhonda's World. Mama Rhonda's World and subscribe to her as well. I'll put the link in my description and this has been so much fun. So we love you guys and make sure you guys comment below. Let's get the conversations going, okay? Exactly, share some of your stories with us. Yes, okay, we love you, bye.